human reason. But we formed this teaching and started this teaching from our book, The Age of Reason. We started this teaching from our book, The Age of Reason, by Thomas Pell. And we was looking at the age of reason, and we was looking at one part of the scripture where, one part of this book where it says, well, John Thomas Paine said, my mind is my church. And that is, that's how it is in this 21st century. The mind of man is his church, not the scripture. The scripture is our church. That's what we live by. That's what we are going to die by. That's what we're saved by. The scriptures are able to make you wise unto salvation. And so we look at the scriptures and we believe everything that the script we believe everything that the scripture says. If it can't be found in scripture, we don't believe it. I had J.D. to print this out and be going for a lot of things. Here's the Southern Baptist. Now here's the Southern, here's the Southern Baptist. Here's the Southern Baptist. Here's the Southern Baptist. Here it is. Here's the Southern Baptist. And the Southern Baptist now, the Southern Baptist started preaching the doctrine of predestination and the sovereignty of God when these United States was founded. That's what the Southern Baptist preached. They preached predestination and the sovereignty of God. When this United States was founded, it was founded with them preaching the doctrine of predestination and the sovereignty of God. That's the Southern Baptist. Now the Southern Baptist has changed. See, the guy was talking two days, said they don't split. You got what you call a G3. They're giving themselves names. They call it the G3. All you got to look up is G3. They have separated themselves from the Baptist. It's called G3. All you got to do is type G3. They have separated themselves from the Southern Baptist. And now the Southern Baptist ordained three women as pastors. The Southern Baptist Convention says only men should be. The Southern Baptist Convention added a ban on female pastors to the Baptist and Messages doctrinal statement in 2000. Now the South, Saddleback Church has ordained three women as pastors. Everybody is moving away from the scripture church. That's why we, that's why your pastor, I am so adamant and hard by the scripture. I don't care about a definition. The definition must align with the scripture. The definition must align with the scripture. The definition don't align with the scripture. The definition has to be in alignment with the scripture. You don't make the scripture in alignment with the definition. You don't take two scriptures, put them together, and draw a conclusion. That's why I, we, I tell you guys, the mind of man is his church. Whatever his mind tells him, that's what he believes. He believes it himself. He either believes it, believe it in his own heart. The scripture tells us, isn't that in the book of Proverbs? I think it's in Proverbs chapter 26, right? In, chapter, in Proverbs chapter 26, it's in chapter, Proverbs chapter 26. That just came to my mind. Proverbs 26, or it's 24, 26. I know it's a 26 in there somewhere. I know it's a any 20, it's a 26 in there somewhere. It's a 26, 24, 26, 23, 26, 22, 26. And I know the scripture says that uh that uh as it pertains to not trying to find it. There, uh, he that believeth in his own heart is a fool. I know it's a 26 and they have simply something of a 26. Can't quite remember exactly where it's at, but I know it's in the book of Proverbs. 28, 26. 28, I know it's a 20, I know it's a 26 somewhere. Thank you, my son. 28, 26. 28, 26. There we go right there. To he that trusted in his own heart, he's a fool. He's a fool. Whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about walking wisely. How do we walk in wise? Walk wisely. We don't walk wisely by human reason. We don't walk wisely by human reason. We walk wisely. We walk wisely. We walk W-A-L-K. We walk wisely. We walk wisely. How do we walk wisely? 
We walk by it. This is Proverbs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 28 and 26, right? Yeah. How do we walk by We walk according to Exodus, Exodus 20, verses 1 through 17, and Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 6 through 22. This is for first, this was for first generation. This was for first generation. First generation. First generation. Or first beginning, right? First, first beginning. Because I the reason I say right, when I say right, I'm I'm believing you know and understand. Amen. That's why I say right. And then I expect you to answer right. So we know the first generation. That was the first generation that came out of Egypt, right? That's the first generation that came out of Egypt. Am I right about it? That's the first generation that came out of Egypt. That was the beginning of them coming out of Egypt, right? That was the first beginning, right? And so we see here, we see a second generation, don't we? You see a second generation right here, right? And this is called a second beginning, right? This is the second beginning. The reason it's called the second beginning is because, is because the first generation, right? The first generation... And always remember, it's a generation of who? It's a generation of who? It's a generation of men. No women, no children. you got to remember that. It's men and women. It's the first generation. This is the second generation, right? This is the second generation of who? Of men. Of men. That's what you got to remember. You need to know your Bible so when you're talking to people, you can be able to explain these things and show them in your scripture, okay? okay. So we got we got the extra 2117 was first. The first generation, that's the first uh, beginning, that's the first generation of men. And they come out of Egypt. Out, out of Egypt, right? Yeah. Out of Egypt. Out of Egypt, right? Yeah. Alright. And so we know those that came out of Egypt. What 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 <coughs> What what ethnic group of people were they? What were they? They were Hebrews. They were not Jews. They were Hebrews. They were not Jews. And this is what the scripture tells us. This is what I say. Because you got people that lean towards the Jews. You got people, and that's called Zionism. That's what you got people to lean lean towards the Jews, and that's called Zionism. Zionism. And you got people that believe in Zionism. That's the teaching of most of that is the teaching of rabbis, okay? Now most of that is the teaching of rabbis. We don't believe in Zionism. Because what is Zionism? It's a what? It's a doctrine of what? Zion. Because the ISM means doctrine, right? Right. And Jesus told us of any man, and Paul told us of any man bring any other doctrine. Hello? You told us to mark him and know him, right? Amen. You have nothing to do with him, right? Amen. You best believe that's what Paul told us. We're not going to go to those scriptures because we're not interested in that right now. We're trying to understand this. Because when they get to walking wisely, when you took the Bible talking about obedience, when the Bible talk about walking wisely and doing things, it's always talking. I don't, I don't care what nobody's saying. It's always talking about Exodus 21 through 17, Matthew 5, 6 through 22, and that was first given to the Hebrews. Hello? Amen. It was first given to the Hebrews. That's what, that's, that's what, that's what God did. We understand already how they got separated, right? Yes. Because Solomon loved many strange Why? We went through this. We go through this doctrine. I try to explain these things over and over again because there's always somebody new probably watching us and I want it to be fresh and in your mind. So when we walk wisely, we walk according to Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Now we're going to go back over to Exodus 19 tonight and we're going back over to Exodus 20. Well, three scriptures we're going to use to tie this in with Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20 and Exodus chapter 20. Maybe I'll do a few more. Maybe I'll do a few of these. We're going to do Exodus chapter, Exodus chapter 19 and Exodus chapter 20. Then we're going to move on and I'm going to show you what Moses did. Okay? Yes. So look, we're going to use three passages of scripture to work with tonight. And these three passages of scripture we want to remember as we go through here. 
Let's look at verse, let's look at uh, Proverbs chapter 8. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8. And this one man don't understand now. We want to remember. We want to remember. In reading these scriptures, the foundation of reading the scripture, what these scriptures are built upon. I truly believe this. What, this, what the scriptures is built upon, the foundation of all scriptures. I truly believe this. Just hit me. The foundation of all scripture. The foundation of all scripture is built upon. <coughs> And I'm appropriate. What all scripture is built upon is Exodus 21 through 17, Deuteronomy 6 through 22. That's what all that's what everything. All scripture, all Bible at the, at the, at the Exodus 21 through 17. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 5, 6 through 22. All scripture from that point on, all the way to the end of Revelation, is built mainly upon this scripture right here. These scriptures right here. Your whole Bible rolls the whole Bible. All the conduct, everything a man do, all his behavior, all his thinking, all his acting, his whole behavior is built right up on that right there. That's what it's built upon. Your whole Bible. You can remember that. You can see it everywhere in Scripture. The whole Bible is built upon. Exodus 21 through 17 was that first generation, that first beginning, that first generation of men died. Then you get uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 6. 22. Let me put this up here. Generation of men. Right here. 20 years. 20 years. Let me put that up there for somebody to criticize me. And up. Right? Alright. 20 years and up. This was 20 years, right? And under. Right? 20 years and under. Are we don't want to call it. Yeah. All right. So this is what people want to think, but he just didn't talk about all the men and they would be like this life. But what we finna look at, everything is built. You're building everything in your body. In your body. Everything is built right up on Exodus 21 through 17. Watch these scriptures as we go through with it. Okay, so we go to Proverbs chapter 8. In Proverbs chapter 8. Amen. Proverbs chapter 8. In Proverbs chapter 8. And we want verse number. We want Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 36. Are you there? Amen. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36 says, He that sinned against me. What is the person sinning against? He's sinning against Exodus 20, 1 through 17. He's sinning against Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 22. Because he's sinning against me. <laughs> See, this is sinning against me means he's sinning against what I say. And God spoke directly to the children of Israel, to the Hebrews, in Exodus 21 through 17. In Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 22, Moses read verses again to the second generation, the second beginning, Exodus 21 through 17. This is directly from God. I'll put it up there. This is directly from God. This is directly from God. God speaks directly from God. This right here is indirectly from God because it comes through Moses. Right? Yeah. Indirectly from God. They heard it then. Yes. But they were too young to understand it wasn't. Yes. Right? Yes. So Moses rehearsed it again to them. They heard it twice, didn't they? Yes, yes they heard it when they were young uh -huh. and then they heard it when they was old. Hello? Amen. They heard it two times then. Yes, they did. They heard it two times. It's just like us. We, hit a, we have heard it two times. You hear it first in your physical birth, and then you hear it again in your born again birth. You got two births. You have two births. Your first birth is the 46 chromosome. The second birth is you born in the spirit. Amen. That's exactly what this is a picture of. The first birth is the, that's, that was a birth of the flesh. 
Second birth is the birth of the Spirit. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. But your first birth is your 46 chromosomes. Amen. Your second birth is you born of the Spirit. So you got two births. Hello? Amen. Yeah, you got one birth where you're born of your mother and father. You got one birth where you're born of the Holy Spirit. It's two births. Amen. Okay. So we look at Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 36. He say, He that sinneth against me. What does he sin against? He sins against Exodus 21 through 17. That's what he sins against. Wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me. What do they hate? Exodus 21 through 17. They hate him because of twin Exodus 21 through 17. So y'all know now. Why do people hate God? Because of Exodus 21 through 17. What do they do when they do that? They wrong their own soul. You can answer the question just as simple as that. It doesn't take a lot of thinking and a lot of theological of studying and reading. All you got to do is understand, as I said, because Jesus said it was very simple, and he, it is. When Jesus said his, 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 his yoke is easy, this was his yoke, Exodus 21 through 17. And then he's going gonna to sum it up. We're going to look at it in a few minutes. He sums it up in two commandments. We're going to look at it in, in a few minutes. But here in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36, it says, He that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. So the, the one that's sinning is the soul. The one that's sinning is the soul. The one that's sinning is the soul. The soul is the one that sins. So the soul that sinned against God, God is a spirit. We was made in the image and in the likeness of God. God is a spirit. He said, let us make man in our own image. The image of God is not the form dust. The creation of God is him breathing into man the breath of life. That's what he breathed into man. He breathed in man breath of life. We already know, we should know, we should remember, what he gave man was reason and conscience. That's what he gave man when he breathed into him. The breath of life. He gave man reason and he gave man conscience. When he gave man reason, that reason was not corrupt as it is now. That reason was not corrupt as it is now. For that reason is the same reason that Adam knew, that Adam used to call uh his to call his 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 bone that was of his bone and his flesh that was of his flesh. He used that same reason to call that bone of his bone and that flesh of his flesh. He used that same reason to call bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, woman. God didn't have to tell him what to call her. He knew what to call her through the breath that God had breathed in him which gave him reason and conscience with God. As I was speaking to the gentleman today, he said the same thing that I told you, that told you, is that the same thing that I taught and I teach and I told you. He said, Adam did not eat from the tree. I said, that is exactly right. People don't teach that Adam didn't eat from the tree. Adam ate from the hand of the woman. That's what he ate from. And in him eating from the hand of the woman, which she took from the tree. God being God, who he is, he, 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 he accused, he judged Adam and said Adam ate from the tree because what the woman God gave him out of her hand came from the tree. So he ate indirectly from the tree. He didn't eat directly from the tree. He did not go directly to the tree, take a piece of the fruit, Take the fruit off the tree and eat it. He did not go directly to the tree. That's what directly means. That means in his reason, this is what I was talking to the guy about today. I said, you understand. In his reason, he did not say, well, I'm going to go to this tree. He didn't think within himself and say, well, the woman said that uh, the, the, the fruit of the tree is good. Let me go and get me a piece of it and uh, see what it's like. He didn't do that. He took it from my hand. Because he knew the commandment in him. That's why God judged him. And he got, and the scripture tells us that God said to the man, God said to the man, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of the woman. That's exactly what the scriptures say. And that's what we believe. Amen. We don't believe nothing that a man 
draw a conclusion, go into the Bible, and he looked in there and he said, I believe that God is telling the man and he's doing this and doing that. That's human reason. You gotta give me a scripture. You gotta show him the scripture where he did that at, where he went and ate from the tree directly. God says, Christian, out of his mouth to the man, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of the woman. I don't care if you got 58 years of preaching. I don't care if you don't went to every cemetery school in the United States of America. I don't care if you've been to Harvard. I don't care if you've been to Princeton. I don't care if you've been to Yale. And you got a, a divinity degree from each one of those schools. I don't care about that. And you got them all up here. This whole world is full of divinity, divinity uh, 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 degrees from divinity cemetery schools. I wouldn't care what a man had if he goes against that scripture. I don't care. But we being who we are, liking to be a part of something popular and believing in rewards from man and uh, material things from man. We look at a man because he got all of these, all of, all of these accolades, all of these uh, PhDs, all of these documents upon his wall and say he's been in all these schools divinity. We, by walking by flesh and not by faith, we look and say, man, that man is smart. Look at all them schools he went to. Who you call Paul? Jesus had 11 ignorant fishermen from Galilee. That's how we got the gospel. We didn't get the gospel from Paul who sat up under the feet of Gamaliel. Paul had to become like a Galilean. We got the gospel from 11 dumb, unlettered, ignorant, which the Bible says Galilean. You didn't have no education. So do y'all think they finna, do you think America is finna listen to a crackhead from the south side of Chicago no. who don't have no divinity degrees, no. who never been to a cemetery school, no. who haven't been reading his Bible for no 58 years? Do y'all think they actually gonna honestly listen to me? No, they ain't not. They're going to look at the man with the degrees. They're going to look at the man with popularity. They're going to look at the man with 8,000, 10,000, 30,000, 20,000, 5,000, 2,000, 1,000 in his ministry. A little, a little flock like ours, they are not going to recognize us. Don't look for it. Amen. Not gonna recognize us. Don't look for it. Don't wanna be. Don't want. Don't be looking for no. Uh, 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 no. No notoriety. That's what I'm trying to say. Notoriety. Notoriety. That's what I was gonna say in the first place. Thank you, JD. We don't need notoriety. All we need to know is we got the what? The truth. That's all we need to know is we walk in wisely. All we need to know is we got the truth. That's all we need to know. We don't need nothing else. He said, fear not look flock. He did not say, fear not great. They go back to church, 2,000 members, 4,000 members. It was 11 ignorant, unlettered Galileans that didn't have no education and no money. So don't be looking for that. Don't let that bother you. It don't bother me. It used to. I'm not going to tell you a lie. But now we don't. Now I see that we're getting closer and closer to the end. It don't bother me. Not like you did in the beginning of our ministry. Okay. So we look at verse 36. Understand. They say, he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Because man became a living soul. God formed man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He say, all they, all the souls, all they, they refers to souls. So you can understand. All souls that hate me love death. All souls. Because he tells us in the 18th chapter, he don't say all flesh and blood is man does. God say all souls is man in the 18th chapter 18. He didn't say all flesh and blood is man. He said all souls is man. That's what he tells us that the soul that look at it. Look at Ezekiel 18. See, this is what I'm telling you. You, go, you can understand your Bible by me teaching us, by me teaching us 
Exodus chapter, Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 17, you can understand it now. You can read this whole chapter 18. You can read chapter 18 of the book of Ezekiel. And you can understand everything he's saying. All you got to keep in mind when you read it. All you got to keep in mind when you read it. And you got to know Exodus 21 through 17. If you don't know Exodus 21 through 17, you won't be able to ask me your questions and see me in the scriptures in here. All you got to do is see it. Right? And we'll read some of it. It said, The word of the Lord came unto me again, said, What mean ye that you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. That's a proverb. Well, what do that mean? That means the fathers have sinned, and the children are paying for the father's sin. That's what it means. Well, that, they didn't know the law because the law stopped being taught by the priest. You turn your Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 24. You turn your Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 24. You go to Deuteronomy chapter 24 to the what generation? Second generation. Second generation. You go to Deuteronomy 24, and this is what Paul told them. He said, I want y'all to understand something. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse number 16. Do you understand? Deuteronomy 24, verse number 16. Are you there? Amen. Are you there? Amen. He said, the father shall not be put to death for the children. So he's telling them, y'all are not going to die because be, 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 uh, y'all are not going to die because of what your father did. And the children are not going to be put to death because of the father did. It says, neither shall the children be put to death for the father. Everybody is accountable and responsible, Caleb. This is what people don't understand. They want to always want to go, my mama was like this, and my daddy was like this. Here you go, Caleb. My mama, I come from a broken home, and y'all don't know how my mama treated, and my daddy, he didn't do this. But your mama didn't sin. Your, your, your mama didn't tell you to sin. Your mama probably told you not to sin. Your daddy probably told you not to sin. You sinned against God. Never forget Proverbs 8, 30, 30, 36. He that sinned against me, wrong with his own soul. It ain't got nothing to do with your mom and your dad. Him, he that sinned against me, wrong with his own soul, all they that hate me, love death. And then it says, in Deuteronomy 24, 16, the father shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. I'm going to read it very slow. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. So you don't have no excuse. You can't use your father and your mother nor your children as excuse. These children, your side and life cannot come tell me, well, the reason I would like that daddy because my daddy wasn't really with me when I was young. He can't, he can't come tell me that, can he? No, he can't. No, Elijah Josiah can't come tell me that. You ain't finna come tell me that, boy. You died for your own sin, boy. You hate God. God told you thou shalt not kill. You say, I will if I want to. Ain't got nothing to do with your daddy and your mom. I'm going to read it again. The father shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death from the fathers. For the fathers. Mm -hmm. Every individual yeah. shall be put to death for what? His own sin. He's going to be put to death for his own sin. Look at 1 Kings 14 and 6. Look at 1 Kings 14, verse number 6. People don't understand. Look at 1 Kings 14 and 6. I have no First Kings chapter 14, verse number 6. Amen. Did I say 6? I got 2 Kings. I'm sorry. 2 Kings. My fault. 2 Kings 14 and 6. 2 Kings 14 and 6. All right. Are you there? Amen. 2 Kings 14 and 6. Are you there? Amen. Are you there? Yeah. It says. Well, let's read down to it. Mm -hmm. It said, in the second year of Joanne, son of Jehoah, Je Jehoahaz, king of Israel, reigned Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah. He was 20, 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadar of Jerusalem. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not like David his father. He did according to all things as Joash his father did. Again, the high places were not taken away. And still the people did sacrifice burnt incense on the high places. They broke 
Exodus 21 through 17. They didn't love God. They made great revenge. He said, it came to pass as soon as the kingdom was confirmed in his hand, that he slew his servants, which had slain the king his father. But the children of the murderers he slew not, according unto that which is written in the book of the law of Moses, wherein the Lord commanded, saying, The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, nor the children be put to death for the father. But every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Go back over to Ezekiel chapter 18. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 18. And look at verse number 1 again. The word of the Lord came into, me, uh, came into me saying, The word of the Lord came into me again saying, What mean ye that you use this proverb to serve the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As, li as I live, said the Lord, the fathers have eaten sour grapes, the children's teeth are set on edge. What is that? <coughs> Reason. That is not scripture. That's, some, that's something they made up. They made that up. That came out of their mind. That is human reason. That's human reason. That's what that is. That's not scripture. Understand again. The fathers have eaten sour grapes. The children eat are set on edge. That is not scripture. That is human reason. They made that up. Tells us in verse 3, God said, the word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, in verse 3, as I live, said the Lord, you shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb that you made up in Israel. I told nobody that. Amen. That's what we do. We take what man says, human reason, and we use it for scripture. We take when man says human reason, he draws his conclusion, just like they draw the conclusion right here. And we use it for scripture. That's what we do. And it's not scripture. Behold, God corrects all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul descended. It shall die. Verse number four, where it says, The soul that sinned, it shall die, goes back to Deuteronomy 24 and verse 16. That's exactly what he said. The soul that sinned, it shall die. Because they were saying that the children were suffering for what the fathers did. He said, No, I ain't never said nothing like that. You got that from man. Children don't suffer for what their parents do. Children suffer for their own sin. Children don't suffer for what their parents do. Church, oh, don't you oh, ever oh. let nobody tell you that. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever in your life tell, let nobody talk to you like that. That the reason that child is like that is because of their mom and dad. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. The reason the child can treat, the reason a child may not know some things is because of their mother and father. Because they weren't taught like they should have. Mm -hmm. But they'll kill it and steal it and murder it and rob it. That's their own sin. Because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. They're supposed to be taught. Amen. Amen. And child may be like that because you didn't teach your child. Mm -hmm. and since you didn't teach your child, your child smoked marijuana, your child may be a lesbian, your child may be a homosexual, your son, your daughter may be a drunk or something. That's because you didn't teach your child. But it's not because of you or the child being abandoned or anything like that. No, it's not. That's what America teaches. God don't teach that. Understand your Bible. And that needs to be said. Yes, it do. Amen. Yes, it do. All souls are mine. And I continue to tell this ministry that. We fall into the trap of human reason. We fall into the trap of Thomas Paine. That's what we do. We start using the human reason. If their mama would have sent them to a better school, if their daddy would have did, they would have been with him. Now, uh -huh. the soul that sent it, they shall die. Father would not suffer for the son, die. The paper of the son, say the son, pay for the father's son. 
All souls are mine. The soul that saved it shall die. And I told y'all in the book of Genesis, I mean the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, when God came down on that mountain, he spoke to everybody individually. Y'all forget, and y'all forget, y'all forget the, the makeup of man. Every man got a conscience. Don't you ever forget that. You see, y'all be getting into these discussions with these people of the world, and you're not, you're not, you're not, uh, you are not educated. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're not educated in scripture. So in place of you just shutting your mouth, you try to stand there with them and hold your own, and you don't know what you're talking about. And so they make you look like a fool. But if you study your scripture and you pay attention to what you're being taught, and you remember Exodus, I'll tell you, all you gotta do is remember Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, 1 through 17. That's all you gotta remember. You re if you remember that, you can uh, hold your own with anybody. You can hold your own with anybody if you understand Exodus 21 through 17. Deuteronomy chapter 5, 6 through 22. Everything, our whole society is built upon that. This whole society, this whole world, every nation is founded <coughs> upon Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Every nation is built on that. That's what man is going to stand and give an account for. The things he has done in his body. Did he perform Exodus 20, 1 through 17? Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 22. No, he didn't perform. But did you receive my Savior, who died in your place, who performed Exodus 21 through 17, Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 22? If you receive him, believe on him, and believe in him, and receive him as your personal Savior, to save you from the death of Exodus 20, 1 through 17, and Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 22. That's what it's all about. Amen. I want to say something. I wrote this down. I want y'all to listen to me. I want y'all to listen to me. Where's my, my revelation God gave? Where's my revelation God gave? What did I do with it? I had something that God gave me. I was going to say, what did I do with it? No, no, no. I don't know what I did. <coughs> I have written some down. What's going on? I do it. How they have mercy. I do it. And two pieces in the back. And I might find it later. Let's go back to, uh, let's go back, let me see where I was. Okay, let's go back to, uh, to uh, Proverbs. So we see that the souls, the souls, we th we're through with Ezekiel. We, we see that the souls belongs to God. And the soul that sin it, that soul is going to die. So the, the, the children do not pay for the sin of the father, the father will pay for the sin of the children. Now I want to look at, that's one scripture. If you pay attention to these scriptures that we are reading, you will see, you will see Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, 17. Let's look at Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Come in. Come in. In Proverbs 15. And in Proverbs 15. And we're Proverbs 15, and we want verse number 32. Yeah. We go again. Proverbs 15, verse number 32. He that refuses instruction despises his own soul. I told you that's the problem with man. He don't want nobody to tell him what to do. Instructing is telling him what to do. 
Now, the word instruction is the word musar. That's what it means. It's the word musar. And it means, it means teaching. Musar, it means, it is M-U-W-C-A-R. Instruction in the Bible. It's M-U-W. M-U-W-C-A-R. All through the book of Proverbs is the, is the word musar. It means chastising. It means chastising. It means reproof. It means correction. It means reproof. That's the word instruction, mainly through the book of Proverbs. I'm just turn to one right now. It means chastisement. That is reproof, warning, warning, warning. You know what you was talking about, Caleb? You know exactly what you was talking about. <laughs> That's what you got there. So it means warning. It means warning. You know what this means? You know what this means? This what man don't like. This what man don't like. R E S T R A I N T. What restrains us? Exodus 21 through 17. What restrains us? What instruct what warns us? Exodus 21 through 17. What instructs us? Exodus 21 through 17. What warns, what, what warns us? Exodus 21 through 17. What keeps us in check, Jamie? Exodus 21 through 17. What checks you? Exodus 21 through 17. What reproof you? Reprove you? Exodus 21 through 17. Church, I don't care where you go, Carolyn. I don't care where you go in the Bible, Carolyn. I don't care what, what where you go in the Bible. I don't care what word you look up. What disciplines us? Exodus 21 through 17. I don't care what nobody tell me. I don't care what nobody say. And this is what I'm telling you. you if you can get to Exodus, if you understand Exodus 21 through 17, you'll be straight. Because that's the instruction that was given to him, wasn't it? Yes, 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 the instruction was given to him. Yes, it was. It's Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Mm -hmm. And so it tells us in Proverbs, it tells us Proverbs, it tells us in Proverbs, chapter 15, right? Yes. 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 Verse number 32. I'm still trying to find a note. I do not know that. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, I say it like this. Two pieces of paper, so just like this thing. Black. You know what I did when I just said? I don't know what I did when I just said that. Probably put them in a page in one of these books. That's probably what I did. I said, put it in the page one of these books. I'm not flipping and find Okay, anyway, we look at 1532, right? Right. We look at 1532, right? Right. You look at 1532. You look at 1532. He that refuses, what do he refuse? He refuses Exodus 2017. He, he refuses to walk wisely, don't he? Yes, he does. He refuses to walk wisely. Look up if you don't walk wise, you gotta walk according to Exodus 21 through 17. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm trying to show y'all it's all through scripture. It's so easy. It's not hard. The hard part coming in me understanding, studying, and remembering doesn't. That's where the hard part comes in at. The hard part comes in in me remembering and studying. That's where the hard part comes in at. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. I just don't remember. I just don't study. I just don't pay attention. Because it's not hard at all. I'm sure I'm trying to find a paper. Look at uh still one of these scriptures though. Look at uh look at uh Proverbs 29 and 24. Well, Proverbs 29 and 24. Proverbs 29. I don't care where you go in the script, that's what you're gonna find. Go to Proverbs 29. Go to Proverbs 29. Go to Proverbs 29. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you look at verse number 24. Go to Proverbs 29. 
when you go to verse 24. Proverbs 29, verse 24. If you're there, and move my sticky notes. If you're there, Proverbs 29, 24 says, Uh oh, uh oh, whoso is partnered with a thief hated his own soul. Because what did the thief do? He broke the steel's leg. Stop doing it. He, either, he stole Exodus 21 through 17. He didn't obey. He a thief. If he a thief, he didn't love his neighbor. And he didn't obey God. He stole from his neighbor. He did not his mom and father. He told him don't steal. That's what you guys don't understand. He a thief. So if, he, if you steal, you don't love your neighbor. That's what y'all don't understand about the, the, uh, Exodus 21 through 17. If you don't know Exodus 21 through 17, you can't understand your Bible. Because everything that Israel, the Hebrews, was judged for was based on what they received at that mountain, Exodus 21 through 17. You don't get your ceremonial law to Numbers chapter 3. When you get the numbers, that's when you get the ceremonial law. Uh -huh. When you get the Leviticus, that's when you get your ceremonial offering up sacrifice law. That's where you get that from. That is given after they build the tabernacle. Hello? Yeah. 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 Now they can bring their sin offering. Now they can bring their burnt offering. Yeah. Now they can bring their peace offering. Yeah. Now they can bring their trespass offering. Now, so let me tell you how you stay in the fellowship with me, beginning in Numbers, Chapter 3. We're going to start in Numbers mainly in Numbers chapter 3. And then he get to Leviticus and, and start teaching them. The Levitical law. The Levitical law is for the Levites. This is what you Levites got to do. This is the Levitical law. Malachi chapter 3 is against the Levites because they broke the Levitical law. Malachi chapter 3 is all about the Levites. Because they perverted, they corrupted, and they broke the Levitical covenant, the Levitical law that God made with Levi. I was teaching and J.D. said it. Bam! It hit her one night while I was teaching. That was a covenant with Levi. And that's exactly what it says in the book of Malachi. That's what this book of Malachi can say. And see, this is what our problem is. We've been drawing, we've been having me instead in the pulpit and draw conclusions, and draw conclusions, hello? Amen. Draw these conclusions from their imagination heaven. And, it's, and what they've been telling us is not scripture. And we've been believing that they, that they are telling us the truth based upon their credentials they got in the United States of America, and the comments and the remarks they make concerning themselves. He that speaketh of himself, he seeketh his own word. I'm going to stand up there and tell you I've been, been a preacher for 58 years. I've been reading my Bible for 58 years. You can't no man tell me none. I'm not going to do that. Amen. When J.D. showed us, when, when J.D., what I say? When J.D. showed us what she showed us in that, in that uh, Ferris lexicon, I could have flipped, couldn't I? Yeah. I said, when J.D. showed us. Uh -huh. J.D. showed me that boy in, uh, in, uh, what I go? Matthew chapter 3. Now go to chapter 2. Is it chapter 2? chapter 2. When J.D. showed us, when J.D. showed us what she showed us in that book, that there's lexicon, I went crazy then. Yes, did. Remember about the voice? Yes. J.D. came in there. J.D. showed me. J.D. showed me that scripture, Ernestine. JD showed me, JD showed me something yesterday, and I and I told JD, I said, JD, I, I used to believe you was doing those things on purpose. I said, but when I when I seen you kept sitting because I because the flesh should make you think all kinds of things. I said, JD, I said, JD, I used to believe I was believing. Man, JD always sending these scriptures, and I noticed every time JD sent the scripture, if y'all look at her, if y'all pay attention to her exhortation. Most of the JD's exhortations, Charles, if you look, you don't see them, Eric. Most of JD's exhortations always have something to say about the preacher. 
all the time. And I said, I, I, I used to say, man, what are you doing this on purpose? Uh-uh, it happened too many times. She said, preacher, I seen something in my exhortation that I've never seen before. And she said, look at it. And it had, it had to do with faith, right? Yeah. It says, it was under pistols. It's what you're finding under pistols. Most people don't want to read it. They don't want to read it. You know, I, I read it now. Most people, don't, they don't want to acknowledge this. They, but you can't do nothing about it. Amen. <laughs> you can't do nothing about it. And then, and then her exhortation said, if you look at it, she said, if you look at it, you will see. I said, yeah, I see. I said, I seen that. And I told her. I said, let me tell you the truth. I used to think you do this on purpose, but now I see you don't. You must read. <laughs> I said, but I see you don't. And in her, in her exhortation, she had upon the faith. That's the word pistols. That's the word faith. And I told her the truth. I told her the truth. And it says, from pethos persuasion, that is credence, moral conviction of religious truth, or the truthfulness of God, or the truth full of a r e l i g i o u s t e a c h e i have never seen that before i have been saying that that is that is up under faith most people look right over that they don't want to they don't want to acknowledge me as a true religious teacher. You know? They say you got to have faith. Faith is the truthfulness of a religious thing. You can't have, you can't have it without a preacher. You can't. Because how do you get faith? <laughs> Good God of mine. How do you get faith? You get faith from the truthfulness of a religious teacher. You can't get rid of it. How do you get faith? Paul said it. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. How can you hear without a religious teacher? The truthfulness now, not just anything. <laughs> Preach. It don't make sense. It's just crazy, ain't it, y'all? Strong yes. conviction and belief. Huh? It says strong conviction and belief. Oh. And the truthfulness of a religious teacher. That's what it's saying. <laughs> Most people don't want to acknowledge that. That's on them, though. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, it is. That's why I was telling J.D. I, I tell J.D. That's why Paul told the Corinthians. Doubtless I'm an apostle to you. That's what he said. Doubtless is just like something. <laughs> Can't nobody, everybody, they criticize Charles, they criticize JD. It's not that you'll be criticized for you too. You cannot convince JD, and you're never going to convict her that I'm a false teacher. You can forget her. She don't need you as a witness. And I told JD that. Like I told my two sons that yesterday. I said, you can't convict, you can't convince JD and convict her enough. They can say J.D. kissed my behind. They can say what they want to say. You can't convict her of that because she got a witness. A witness builds her conscience. Amen. Mm. You're not going to convict Charles. His witness Amen. is his conscience. Amen. That's the witness you need. People don't understand that, Eric. Your, I, told, say, I said about Glenn. Glenn's witness concerning me is his conscience. Ernestine witness concerning me is a conscience. Van's witness concerning me is his conscience. That's the witness. She got the Holy Spirit that bears witness with her conscience that I am a religious teacher. I don't care what you say. You can't convict me. What is that? What do you got? Oh, yeah. We're supposed to have, we're supposed to have read this. <laughs> <laughs> we might be supposed to read this, yeah. but John got it here. Uh, for, for, four propositions are contained in that portion of the scripture. We should show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience bearing witness, and their thoughts to meanwhile accusing and also excusing one another. There is in every man a conscience. Their conscience bearing them witness. Every one of them had a conscience bearing them witness. That the light which conscience is directed to work by this knowledge written in their hearts. Ain't nothing you can tell. I don't care. I don't care what you say. <laughs> but by me, you can't convict JD's conscience. It's there. It's there. <laughs> That's why I understand it's back. It's in a conscience. 
was beating her down. It was beating her down. <coughs> the, that the light which conscious is directed to work by its knowledge, written in their hearts, that the bond that binds the man's conscience is Exodus 20. <laughs> 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 That's what it says. That's what it says. We ain't finished reading this all Sunday. So just keep your book and we gonna finish reading. <laughs> That's what it says in the book. It says that the bond, B-O-N-D, that binded the man's conscience is Exodus 21 through 17. Wow. Wow. Which showed the word of the law written in their heart. I, it says God's law. I read Exodus 21 through 17. That's God's law. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? That's God's law. When you let me, let, let, me, let me show you guys something. Let me show you guys. Let's look at this first. Mm -hmm. Look at chapter 2. Amen. It said, now, O ye priests. You can't change this. Mm -hmm. Who is this for? Priest. 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 This Priest. commandment is for you. If you will not hear, hear what? This Amen. commandment. Amen. If you will not lay it to heart. Lay to heart what? Amen. This Amen. commandment. To give glory unto my name. Right? They broke Exodus 21 through 17. They didn't give glory to his name. They didn't love their neighbor. They didn't love God with all their heart, soul, and mind. They, they broke the commandment. He said, Say the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. I will curse your blessing. Yes, I have cursed them already. What was their blessing? What was the priest's blessing? Anybody know what the priest's blessing was? Do anybody know what the priest's blessing was? Service to God. What, what was their blessing? Uh, what, what was their blessing? What was the priest's blessing? Nobody don't know the priest's blessing in here? No, no, you don't know. Say, you don't know. You guess. The time. Amen. Oh, well, well. The priest's blessing was the tent. You turn your Bible to Malachi 3. Mm -hmm. You look at verse number 8. Eight. You look at verse number 7. Mm -hmm. Even from the days of your fathers, you are going away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But you say, where is shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, where is have we robbed thee? That was the priest's blessing. The tithe. Amen. And the tithe was what? Turn back over there before you answer. The tithe was what? The tithe. Look at your Bible. Stop guessing. Stop doing that. The tithe was what? Their blessings. It was what? It was wrong. Look at thank you. Look at your scripture. Turn back, I said. Look, thank you very much. The tithe was cursed. What you say? That's what he said in verse 9, right after he said, You robbed me of tithes and numbers. He said, You are cursed with a curse. Go back over to chapter 2, verse number 2. What it says. Number 2, verse 2. What, what it says. I will even send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Thank you very much. Me. Okay, I have cursed them already. Thank you very much. Amen. Because you laid it not to heart. Thank you very much. You look at verse. You look. You look at this. Look at this. Look. Let's read the book of Malachi. Okay. It said the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by what? Okay. It said the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by what? Okay. He said I have loved you. Who? Love who? Okay. I, what? Israel. Come on. No stars. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. You forgot what B-Y means? See, so y'all you, forget what words mean. That's what I tell you. Y'all don't remember what words mean. So when you, when you go through scripture like this and you forget what that word means, that means you need to go study it some more. You don't know what it means. That's what I keep telling y'all. I keep telling y'all, you got to keep going over. You got to keep going over. We going over it again. You don't read this one time. It says, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you. How has he loved Malachi? He loved Israel. 
said the Lord. And you should notice I read it with you a hundred times, but you forget. So that means you need to go read it again. Yet you say, where in hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? But Esau's name wasn't changed to Israel. Said the Lord, yet I love Jacob. I hated Esau. Why did God hate Esau? Anybody know why God hated Esau? He sold his birthright. That's what he did. He despised his birthright. He sold it for a pot of a, 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 mess of, a mess of beans, a pot. Everybody should know that. Everybody in here should know that. And so this is what, what's wrong with the church. This is another reason why I'm teaching is because people don't know their Bible. Y'all don't know y'all Bible. They said, I hated these all laid his mountain and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Now, y'all don't know why he did that, do y'all? He did that because when, when they attacked his brother Israel, he took advantage of them when they, was, when, they, when they was down and out, when they was desperate. When they had been attacked, he came behind them and he took advantage of them. With his evil and wicked self, he kicked them when they was down. With his evil and wicked self. He never would help him. Whereas he was saying, we are in progress. You need to be. You broke God's law. You didn't love your neighbor. He, they didn't love their neighbor. Just because God didn't get a law to Jacob and him, that didn't mean it didn't apply. They had a what? Thank you. Amen. People think that because they ain't happy, it didn't apply. In the conscience. That's what Paul tells you in the book of Romans. Whereas Edom said, We are in part, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord of hosts, They shall build, and if you build them, I threw it down one time. They said, Well, that's all right. We're going to go back. We're going to build it even better. He said, And I'm going to throw that down too. I will throw down. They shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord have indignation sometimes. Your eyes shall see. You shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the board of Israel, you Edomites. You're going to see what I'm going to do to you. A son honor his father. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. A son honor his father. That's what these young men that left this ministry didn't understand. Son honor his father. Yes, he did. Son instruct his father. His father instruct his son. The child followed the child. The son followed the instructions of his father. Mm -hmm. Now, son, give me your money. Yeah. Son honor his father and a servant his master. And the servant is not above his master. That's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. You think that Jesus get all this stuff from y'all? What do you think that Jesus was quoting from? What do you think Jesus was teaching them? He was teaching. He fulfilled the law of high priest, didn't he? Amen. He's the great high priest. Yeah. Amen. If I then, if then, if then I be a father, where is my honor? If I be a master, where is my fear? Said the Lord of hosts unto you. The whole book is about the priest. Oh, priest that despise my name. He done went all the way back to Exodus 21 through 17. Wherein have you despised my name? He don't go to talk to, he don't go to the priest and start talking about that they broke Exodus 21, 17. He goes to the covenant he made with him. You offer polluted bread upon my altar. So what did they do? They robbed God. Amen. They stole the time. They, they replaced the good bread with polluted bread. They replaced the good bread that was supposed to be going on off. They just gave them anything. They put polluted bread up there. They didn't honor him. They didn't keep the covenant he made with the priest. It's so simple. So the covenant is broken now, ain't it? Yes. All they had to do was do it was how many times? One time. That's all you got to do it is one time. You don't have to do it ten times. You did it one time, you broke the covenant. You say, we're in hell. He talking to who? The priest. The priest. The priest. He said, oh, priest. Oh, priest. <laughs> he said, oh, priest. You offer polluted bread upon my altar. You say, oh, priest. Where in hell have we polluted thee? Like God's stupid or something. 
What do you mean we have polluted things? They had no business reclining back to them. What should have they yet done? Repent. What, what, what are you talking about? We don't pollute you. They're very arrogant, ain't they? Yes, they are. they arrogant? Yes. No, no, no. Like God's stupid enough. What? We're in there, we polluted you. You got your bread, man. Wow. You just told me to bring you some bread, never your bread. What's your problem, God? That's how we in. Yes. Yes, we are. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I got did it. What more do Dennis want? I keep trying to tell y'all you got to do it exactly like God said. I keep telling y'all that. Amen. I keep telling y'all that. I'm the way, the way, what, J.D.? I'm trying. What you say, J.D.? I'm trying. No, he said do it. <laughs> he know you can do it because he gave you the intelligence, the reason, and the physical ability to do it. Amen. You just don't want to. Amen. Same way you put that food bread up there, the same way you No, 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 Jenny, no, uh -uh, that ain't the same way. I can't do that. <laughs> Y'all going back the same way you put that polluted bread up there, it's the same way you can put that good bread up there. You didn't want to. Preach. Good. Preach. You want the polluted bread up on my altar, you say. You even want to talk about it, turn around with your arrogant self and, and tell God, what are you talking about? Wherein have we all polluted thee? And that you say the table of the Lord is contemptible. If you offer the blind, did they rob God? They broke Leviticus chapter 22, verse 17 to 25, 21, 17 to 24, and Deuteronomy 15, 21. That was the table of the Lord. You weren't supposed to put nothing polluted upon this table. You put that upon the table of the Lord. That means you was feasting with the Lord. Y'all was in fellowship together. When you offer bread on the altar, bread had salt in it. That was a covenant in symbolizing fellowship and respect. They knew it, so they bought him a blind sacrifice. If you offer the blind for sacrifice, it's not that evil. If you offer the lame and sick, it's not that evil. We're not supposed to offer the blind. We're not supposed to offer the blind to the Word of God with those that are blind. With blind in the word of God, concerning the word, we're not supposed to offer that to God. We're supposed to teach them and we're supposed to heal them. We're supposed to open their eyes. Then we're not supposed to offer up the lame to God. We're supposed to teach them so they can. Offer it now unto the governor. Pay half of your taxes to the governor, he said. <laughs> go tell the governor you're going to give him part. Well, go, go up to, tell the government when it's time to pay your taxes. I just want to give you half of the taxes. Will he be pleased with you? <laughs> See, you will obey man, but you will not obey God. Y'all will do everything the law tell y'all to do. Everything the law tell y'all to do in the world. And I told y'all that. Y'all will do everything the law tell you to do in the world so you can keep that little raggedy house you got in that raggedy car yes. and them raggedy clothes on your body and keep getting that $2 check. You do anything they tell you to do. But when it comes to God, you want to offer him through looted bread. See, you, don't, you, want, you don't want to do what God tell you to do. And this, like, this is how man is. But let that man tell you you finna come take that raggedy house you got. Mm -hmm. Let him tell you you finna put you out and see what you do. Look, you don't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be out trying to get the government. <laughs> that job tell you that you don't be there. We finna fight. Watch what you do. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Amen. 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 Offer it now to the government. Will he be pleased with thee or accept your person? Is he going to accept your person? Because you said that he's going to. That means accept your word. Is he going to accept your word and say, well, you're going to pay me? He said, all right, then. You say, you're going to pay me. I'm giving you 30 days. That lets you know he didn't accept your word. He said, I'm giving you 30 days to make this payment. You don't make this payment in 30 days, this is what's going to happen to you. And you're going to do everything you can to make that dog go pay you. Oh, yeah. But when God tells you to do something, you won't do it. And now I pray you beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This has been your means. This is how you have acted. This has been your means of responding to me. This is how you have acted towards me. This has been your means of approaching me. This has been your means of dealing with me. This how you is. That's just how you is. 
I keep telling people, that's just how you went. What more could I do? That's all they could do. That's all they were. Will he regard your person? Will God respect your person? Respect you because you said it, because of who you will. Will he respect you just because you say I'm a priest and I offer polluted bread, but I'm still a priest? Will he accept your person? No, he will not accept your personality. He's not going to accept your attitude. He's not going to accept your disposition. He's not going to accept your character. He's not going to accept your temperament. He's not going to accept your conduct. Give it, you give it grudgingly, you don't do like I said, you might as well keep it in your pocket. I don't want it. Amen. I don't need you. He said a cattle on a thousand hills is mine. He said if I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you. If I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you nothing. Everything is mine. Fool you. Man's a fool. Hey look, let me explain something to y'all. We, what do I say? We, we don't do God no favor. Do y'all understand what I just said? Yeah. I said we. What I said? We. we don't do him no favor. You don't need us. Yeah. You walk around here like he like he need us. Yeah. Is you a fool? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> God don't need us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to accept your person. You think you're so much important in the ministry. Yeah. I'm leaving. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> you think you're so important. God do not accept your person. Nope. Now I pray you. Now I pray you. Beseech God that he will be gracious to us. This has been your means. Will he regard your person, said the Lord of hosts? <laughs> Who is there even among you that will shut the doors for nothing? Neither do you ignite fire on my altar for nothing. I have no pleasure in you, said the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hands. They robbed God, didn't they? Said I want nothing else from you. It's over. What you got, I gave you. Say it again. What you got, I gave you. Thank you very much. I'm going to have to accept that for you. It's mine already. It's mine already. I told you what I want on my altar. People don't understand about the word of God. There you go. I love when he said this right here. From the rising of the sun, even until the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. Calling them to the gospel. In every place, incense, that's prayer, shall be offered unto my name. And a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, said the Lord of hosts. That means they pray. I mean, they got judgment coming on them. You have profaned it. What did they profane? Profane. No, they didn't. They profaned. Yeah, you have profaned his name, my altar. They profaned his name. They profaned the altar. That's what they said. The profane it is that you say that the Lord the Lord is polluted. Talk about my altar in verse number 10. You have profaned my altar. That you say the table of the Lord is polluted. The fruit of the table of the Lord. That is, his meat is disrespectful. You said also, behold, what a person is it who have snuffed at it. You have snuffed at my altar. You snuffed at my table, said the Lord of hosts. You brought that which was torn. You had no respect for me. You brought that which was torn and the lame and the sick. And you bring that and you say, that's God's offering. There go God's people. You, 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 you brought that which was a homosexual and a lesbian. You, you, you bought the fornicator and the adult. You bring that which is sick. You bring that which is lame. You bring that which is torn. And you say, these are the children of God. No, they're not. <laughs> yes, you brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, said the Lord? First through the what? Seed. Which hath in his flock. What? <laughs> and bow and sacrifice unto the Lord or what? Corrupt Thank you. Thank you. You still. I love this right here. I'm a great king. You know why? I am a great king. Said the Lord of hosts. My name is dreadful among the heathen. <laughs> then he said, O priest again. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, said the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. How did, they, how, how did he curse their blessings and tithes and offerings? That's what he told me. Behold, I will 
corrupt your seed. We're talking about the priests. We're talking about Aaron and his sons. We're talking about the Levites. Especially Aaron and his sons. I will corrupt your offspring. I will spread dung on your face. I disrespect even the dung of your solid face. And what shall take you away with the dung? You shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you that my covenant might be with Levi, said the Lord. That was the covenant of the Levites. That's in the book of Leviticus. This is not talking about nothing about the, uh, the uh, covenant he made with them on Mount Sinai. It is included because the first five commandments was towards the Lord. In order to keep the Levitical love covenant, you had to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, didn't you? Yes. Amen. But then they didn't do it. They didn't love God. They had no respect for God at all. My covenant was with him, my life and peace. I gave them, I gave them to him for the fear with which he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was, it's not anymore. Past tense, the law of truth was, it's not anymore. B.C. 397, the law of truth is not in their mouth. The law of truth was the Levitical law and the law that God gave them on Mount Sinai. They were supposed to teach the people the law and offer up sacrifice for the people. They were supposed to represent God, represent the people to God. It was the, they were supposed to be in the people's place. My covenant was with him of life and peace. I gave them to him for the fear with which he feared me. He was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, not no more. And iniquity was not found in his lips. It is now. He walked with me in peace and equity. Past tense. And then turned many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips, the whole book is about the priest. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. They should seek the Lord, the law at the priest's mouth. For the priest is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But you are departed out of the way, out of the law, out of the truth. You have departed out of the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have done it. You caused many to stumble at Exodus 21 through 17. You did. You caused many to stumble at Exodus 20, 21 through 17 and to the law of Levi. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi. How many times he got to say it? <laughs> See, my covenant was with you of life and peace. Verse number five. My covenant might be with Levi. Verse number four. My covenant with Levi. Verse number five. He get down to verse number eight and said, the covenant of Levi. Aaron and his sons. They broke the covenant. Aaron and his sons and the, and the Levi. It broke the whole thing. That's what Jesus fulfilled. He fulfilled the moral law and he fulfilled the ceremonial law and he fulfilled the judicial law. There's three parts to the law. Nobody tells you that. They just want to throw that whole law on you so you can tithe. This law was not written on your heart, put in your mind, put in your mind, written on your heart. This, this book of Levi, what we're reading, the Levitical law was not written in your heart, put in your mind, put in your mind, written on your heart. You just read it in that conscience book. They knew it. I know it. The others know it. They have taken tithe and they have used tithe to deceive the people. You are not to tithe. You are not obligated to give God a tenth of your income. You give every man as he purposed in his own heart. Everybody is supposed to give according as the Lord has blessed them. What Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, the poor will be with you always. How can he give a tip if he ain't got none that he poor? Then mm -hmm. you're going to take that and tell a man, teach a man that he don't love God and he sin it because he don't give you a tip. A tip. I'm sick of them. I'm going to tell you the honest God truth. Every one of them. Y'all ain't going to hear me. I don't care. All these jack leg preachers in the pulpit with all of these denominations, all of these conferences, starting all of these new religions, all these new denominations, Rick Warren, Southern Baptist, Joel Osteen, Jim Brown, 
R.C. Sproul Jr., John MacArthur, I don't care who they are. They ask nothing to me. You can call me arrogant, you can call me a fool, you can call me stupid, think I think he think he know everything. You can say what you want to say. But they're not preaching these scriptures. They're not. <coughs> they thieves and robbers. And this was wrong with the people. You guys will not be dumb in hell. You will learn these scriptures. Amen. Amen. You learn these scriptures. Amen. Preach, Dennis. You gotta learn these scriptures. Preach. Preach. Stop being stupid. Paul said, I would not have you in here. You gotta learn the scriptures, church. That's why those people out there deceive. That's why many of them out there sick and weak and sleep. But they don't know the scriptures. The scriptures ain't gonna make you wise until salvation You better know these scriptures. You better know the story. Y'all don't know it. Y'all don't read it. I read the whole book. I love reading this. I read this. I, I was telling the guy, I don't, can't nobody get angry with me say that he had pride and thinking or thing. I challenge any one of them jack legs out there with a King James Bible. I, I, I want to even go to the theological dictionary of the New Testament. I want to look up a word. I want to look up not. I, I want to use, I want to use the, the internet and Bible. I want to just pick up the scripture and read the scripture. He said the covenant was with Levi. Well, what covenant was with Levi? The covenant in Leviticus, you knucklehead in Numbers chapter starting in chapter 3. Crazy, man. They're crazy. He's talking about the Old Testament is outdated. How's the Old Testament outdated? When Jesus, when the, when the book of Hebrews says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and for the <laughs> These people is crazy. Yes. The Bible is outdated. The Old Testament is outdated. Every time Jesus talks something, he refers back to the what? Old, Old Testament. Testament. <laughs> Old Testament is written in your heart. He was talking about Jesus about washing hands. He said, you don't remember what David did when he was running, running from Saul? When he ate the old beard from the priest? I mean, he broke the Sabbath. They didn't understand nothing. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Y'all been understanding these scriptures? That's all you need to do is know these scriptures. You read these scriptures like I'm reading. Just like I'm reading to you. I'm reading them to you. Therefore, I have Because that's why I wanted to put a hand to try to get me revelation. When people say, well, I don't see it like that. Don't see what? What do you don't see like that? You don't see, you don't see verse 8 like I see it and explain it? That's what you don't see? People, when people say that, I don't know if I know something about it. When people say that, well, I don't see it like that. Do y'all do y'all do y'all know what they're saying? No, y'all don't know what they're saying. People say, well, I don't I don't see it like that. I mean the way you explain that and the way that you read that, I don't see it like that. They think that's a profound state. Ain't no balance in that. I don't see it like that. See means to proceed. Because I know you see the words, W-H-A-T-A. I know you see the words in the letter. So they say, well, I don't see it like you are explaining it and expounding on it. Well, what do that mean? Do y'all think that's a, a profound statement when a person say that? Do y'all know what type of statement that is? Anybody? No, it, no, it, no, it's not. You don't understand. Do y'all know what type of statement like that is what they say? When they say, I don't see it like that. No, we don't know. That's a statement of stupidity. That's a statement of ignorance. That's a statement they think they're being profound. I don't see it like that. Well, that means you're stupid. <laughs> That's, that's, a, that's a statement of ignorance. That's not a statement of intelligence or profundity. When people say, well, I don't see it like that. What do see means? See means to mentally perceive. So if you're not mentally perceiving like it's written, like it's defined, and like it's explained, that means you're stupid. That means that mean you're ignorant. You say, I don't see that scripture, what you are reading, and the definition of the words that you define out of the scripture and the way you explain it, I don't see it like that. That's not a 
statement of profundity. That's not a statement of real deepness, intelligence. That's a statement of stupidity. Amen. That's a statement of ignorance. Y'all think that that's an intelligent, profound statement? You see, the more you deal with people, the more you talk to people, and these things start to matter. And I was just thinking, this, this person really think that they say or something? Yeah. I don't see it like that. And it just hit me. I said, these people really, really think they say or something? They really think that they say something that has some balance and some weight to it. They really think they say something very deep and profound. That's a statement of ignorance. A statement of stupidity. I don't see it like that. Because y'all don't even understand what the word see is. Because you're reading the scripture. Well, musar. That means warning, instruction, restraint, check, reproof, discipline. And that's against that that's concerning Exodus 21 through 17. Well, I don't see it like that. You gotta be stupid. <laughs> We said, well, well I, don't, I, I don't see how you put that with that. And that's what was taught to me. He takes scripture here to get there, and he tied all over, and he put, you is dumb. All scripture is given by inspiration to God. You need to be kicked. But you don't understand that. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness. That the man of God. Amen. Not you. That the man of God, not you. That the man of God may be thoroughly furnished. Not you. Amen. That the man of God be thoroughly furnished. Not you. <laughs> Preach. That the man of God. Man of God. Amen. That the man from God. If he a man from God, what kind of man is he? If he a man from God, what kind of man is he? Thank you. God is the Spirit. See, many people can't answer because you don't know who God is. You've got to know God is a Spirit to know a man from God. If God is a Spirit and the man is from God, what kind of man is he? But see, you've got intelligence and you, can't, you, and you don't understand. Y'all, you understand what I'm saying, Jeremiah? And you think you're smart and know something, don't you, Christian? And it's a man from God. But you don't understand that. So I'll tell you what, the warning is the word Musa. And that goes with extra 20 months. I'm going to see you like that. <laughs> see, church. Sir, church, see. 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 I don't see it. I don't it over. I don't see it. I don't P E R C E I V E. I don't perceive it. Yeah. They're not saying they don't see the words in the letter, J.D. Mm -hmm. What they're saying is I do not M E T A. L L Y. I don't mentally grasp that. That's because you're what? Stupid. Thank you. <laughs> you are hearing. And you're ignorant. And you're ignorant. That's all it means. Think about I don't see it like that. That means you don't mentally grasp with your mind. Amen. That's what it means. I don't see it like that. Because you're stupid. That's what the Bible says. I didn't say it. The Bible says every man is brutish. Every man is by art. Every man is stupid. I don't like that. I don't like till he calling me stupid. I didn't call you stupid. <laughs> I thought Holy Spirit called you stupid. Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. All right. Amen. That's what we're going to be trying to talk about Sunday. <laughs> People don't think, think man wrote the Bible. The man was wrote as they was moved by the Holy Ghost. What you want to have? This thing when people say that. Oh, I don't believe the Bible it was written by a man. What about the U.S. Constitution? Uh, it's all right. Shut up, Eric. Eric, what trouble, man? I love you for that. You best believe so with the Constitution. Preach, Eric. Preach, Eric. Preach, Eric. Preach, Eric. You don't believe the Bible, but you believe the Constitution, right? And that ain't holy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At all. That's human reasons. Mm -hmm. 
Constitution of the United States is not a holy document. It wasn't dictated to man by the Holy Spirit. The Constitution of the United States of America is not a holy document. Don't you come in here and tell me that. I'll run you out of here. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? We still, I, that's why I love human reason, nice. I love human reason. Human reason is stupid, ain't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, human reason is stupid. That's the only thing we know. The only thing you can revert back to. That's all. That's it. The whole Bible is against human reason, ain't it? Amen. Exodus 21 through 17 against human reason, ain't it? Yes, it is. No, no palliate. No, no, no excuses. No palliate. No reason why. No reason why. <laughs> Preach, sister. This is what I'm teaching y'all: is bring me unpolluted bread, and that's it, right? That's it. Don't tell me you ain't got none. I'm gonna make sure you got it. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Crazy. Yes, it is. Verse number eight, you have departed out of the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of the Levi, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made, your, made you contemptible and base before all the people. The people hated to bring in sacrifice and they offered. They despised the priesthood. Well, if they despised the priesthood, who did they despise? God. They they despised God. They called, and then you hear him say, look, look at verse number eight. Y'all keep telling y'all, y'all need to be paying attention to this. You have caused. You have caused many to stumble. Why is the people poor? Why is the people still? Why do you just, hey listen, hey listen, hey listen, hey listen, hey listen, hey listen, hey listen. Hey, I got a good one for you. Ready, John? You know why the people say, play the lot? Because the preacher caused them to stumble. They ain't got no money. They want to pay their tithes and they're going to get out of there. They caused the people to stumble because the people don't gave all their money and tithes and offering. They ain't got no more. So they play the lottery so they can get some more money. You have caused the people to go to the gambling board. You have caused the people to play the lottery. You have caused the people to play the horses so they can get some money to bring it in and give it to you and pay their tithes so they won't feel guilty because you make them feel guilty on Sunday and you tell them they thought, God, you, you thief and a robber. You have caused many to stumble. I told you, y'all don't be paying attention to that. You did it. The people despised to bring God offering. They didn't want to bring it no more because the priests were stealing it. They said, we don't, and that's what they in chapter 4. They said, we ain't bringing no more offering. You go over here, and you got to see it. Say, you have called, and the people said, and you go back over here, it, it, you, you go back over here, and the people said, the people said, uh, uh, where you at, people? Uh, bring you the tithes and uh, offering. The people said, the people said, mm, what the people say? Oh, Lord, help us. People said, they say, bring me all the taxes to the store, prove you, but not out without in all the nations. People said, well, I'll find it. I'll find it later. But the people said they didn't want to bring God the offerings and the tithes no more because the priests were stealing. That's what they said. You bring me all the tithes in my house. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. This is what I want, verse number nine. This is what I want, verse number nine. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Now, verse number nine. You are cursed with the what? Cursed. For you have what? Right. 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 Even this what? Oh, oh, they robbed the whole nation of Israel. Oh. They said they were going to bring the tithes. You robbed the whole nation. If, he robbed the whole, if they robbed the whole nation, Right? Yeah. If you go back over to verse number eight, you have caused many to stumble. You go right there. You have caused many to stumble at the law. Mm -hmm. How did they do that? Verse nine. You are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation.
That's why you don't find them tithes in the New Testament. Don't find Paul tithe. Every time Paul talked about giving, he used the law and Deuteronomy pertaining to the act. Every time. You never find them going to the book of Levi talking about a tithe. Nowhere in the New Testament. I challenge any preacher. I told you I don't need nothing about the Bible. You never find them using the book of Leviticus to teach tithe and nowhere. The only time you find in Leviticus, the only time you find in Leviticus, the book of Leviticus mainly talked about is in the book of Hebrews. Talk back with you. Mm -hmm. I wish they had him. You got to know your Bible. Right. You know your Bible, you can't preach. You got to know your Bible. You got to know your Bible. You got to know the law. You got to know these scriptures. Yeah. You got to know. What you say? Changing the priesthood. Let's believe it. Change in the priesthood. That's what it's saying. Hebrews chapter 7. Mm -hmm. The change in the priesthood, it says the change in the law. Yep. That's exactly what it says in the book of Hebrews. Jack Lynn, you, you're deep in the rock. <laughs> we have stole these people money. Now the people want to play the lottery, don't they? Yes, they do. They want to gamble in both, don't they? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Run a show at them. Yes, sir. You got bad credit, don't they? Yes, sir. Why do you think you got bad credit? Mm -hmm. Well, you think you got credit card all charged up? Mm. Huh? You got to buy a new hat, new dress. Oh, yeah. You got to have patches on the first. You got to pay for his car. You want an electric car. You got to put solar panel wall on the building, which God going to tear up in a few more years. Yes, yes. Try to save the earth instead of trying to save a soul. Mm. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Think that you robbing you? <laughs> Hello? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says, therefore have I also made you contemptible and basely for all the people, according as you have not what y'all kept my ways. Have not kept my ways, but you have been what? Partial in the law. A favorite who? A favored who? It was partial in the law. Who did they favor? They were partial in the law. Who did they favor? The rich. They partial. He took from the widow and the orphan and the poor. And he was partial in the law. He was partial in the law. Partial in the law. They had respect to persons. Hello? He was partial in the law. They had respect to persons. That's what he said. And then he started talking about Judah and Jerusalem. He, he, he go on. He said, have we not all one Father, have not one God created us? Why do we dead treasures to every man against his what? Brother. By profaning, by profaning the covenant of our Lord. Fathers. You to have what? Abomination is committed where at? And where else? You to have did what? Profaning the priesthood of which he what? Love. He married the daughter of what? Strange God. Now he went all the way back to the Vedic chapter 21 through 17. They married the daughter of a strange God. The Lord will cut off the man to do it this. And already back to Exodus 21 through 17. Yes. The master and the what? Scholar. The best believe the child, the Dennis and Charles. The teacher and the pupil. Okay. The Amen. teacher and the pupil. Mm -hmm. Out of the tabernacles of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. The Lord Pharisees and him that offered and offered unto the Lord of what? Oh. The Lord of Pharisees right there, church. This you have done again, covering the altar of the Lord with what? Tears. Tears. With weeping and with praying, I was as much as, as that he regarded not the offering any more, receive it with good will at your what? Amen. And you say, wherefore? Because the Lord has been moved against the wife of your youth, against whom you have built treasure. Yet she is your companion and the wife of your cup. Did not he make woman? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit. That's the, that's the Levitical priesthood. He had the residue of the Holy Spirit. He had the residue. The oil was placed upon him. Right? The oil was placed upon him, but it didn't do him no good, did it, man? The anointing oil was placed upon him, but it didn't do him no good, did it, man? No, it didn't do him. Because it needed to be well. Thank you better at told me I just thought you took the Amen. Or being on them ain't doing them no, no good. good at all. I can take this tea, you cold? I tell you cold? Yeah, yeah. I take the tea and pour it on top of your head, it ain't gonna do you no good. Yeah, yeah. But what if you drink? Mm -hmm. You warm on the inside. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen. See the oil was on them. <laughs> but it didn't do them no good. I like that. The oil was on them, 
But it didn't do him no good, did it? It worked it out. It needed to be wet. <laughs> Amen. So what did they have? They had a form of godliness. Amen. Talk back with the church. Amen. But denying the power thereof. They got the word on them, but it ain't what? In them. So they got a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Amen. I don't care why you're going around with the word in your mouth. Mm -hmm. It got to be in your heart. Oh, yeah. Preach, preach. Mm -hmm. You go around talking about the word all you want to. All you want. You can say what you want to say about the word. Everybody got the Lord in their mouth. Thank the Lord. But they ain't got them in their heart. He's not only a savior, he's a Lord. Yes. He's a controller. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what? They don't, like they don't like that control, do they? No, they don't. Because I can't be a he, can I? Right. I can't be a she, can I? Right. I can't be a it, can I? Preach, Dennis. Preach, Dennis. I can't be what I want to be. But I can't be. I can't have I can't be genderless. <laughs> Did he not make one? Yet he had either residue of the spirit and work. What for one? Why did he make one? Why, why did he make John and Rose one? Why did he make Eric and Christian one? That he might seek a godly seed. That's why he made you one. He can say he might seek a godly offspring that your children may be whole. That's why he made you one. Amen. All right. That's why you got to be one. Teaching these young men, they got you got to be compatible so he can see that a godly seed. Mm. Can't marry an unbeliever. I know. I don't want you joined with a heart. Mm. Now, I ain't say a woman that's been. Loose in the world cannot become a Christian. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I was a hog. Amen. Amen. I ain't saying that. Amen. Amen. I don't teach that. Amen. Mary McDonald, she was a hog. <laughs> I ain't saying that. Preach. Preach. Amen. I ain't saying that. I'm not teaching that. You're not supposed to go out there. If they're going to come in Israel, one law for the strength, one law for the home. <laughs> Hello? Amen. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this. Look what he tell me. Look what he tell me. Look what he tell me. See, this is what I tell y'all. This is what you gotta pay attention. Uh, this is what you gotta pay attention to when you're receiving the word of God. You better take heed to your spirit. Right. You better take heed to your attitude, your disposition, your temperament when I'm preaching this word of God. Mm. They go right there. And that's what people don't pay attention to. No, they, don't. they don't pay attention to the attitude they have when I'm preaching the word of God. The scriptures don't read. That's what they say. I don't see it like that. You better take heed to your spirit. You better take heed to your spirit, your temperament, your disposition when I open this book and start preaching and teaching. Like you say there in your mind thinking God's stupid and he's not here. What you don't like. See, that's what the problem is right here. You better take heed to your spirit. Amen. Where's my fear? You go, what? Where's my fear? Thank you very much. Where's your fear? Right. They didn't have none of it. They didn't have none of it. No, they didn't have no fear. Miss JD went all the way back over here. That's right. She understood. Take heed to your spirit. Where's my fear? That's what he asked them over there. You know Ain't got no fear in you. Come in here with an attitude. Please. Uh, Come in here with an attitude. Bible open to watching me on YouTube with an attitude. Mm -hmm. Watching me. Preach, Dennis. With an attitude. Preach. Preach, Dennis. You got no business watching. Preach. Don't watch. Preach. Won't have an attitude. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, take heed to your spirit. Let none deal treachery against the wife of the Jew. The Lord of God. Of Israel and said that he hate hate his putting away. For one covered violence with his garment, and the Lord of and said the Lord of hosts, therefore take heed to your spirit. But you deal not treacherously with the wife of your youth. You take heed to the wrong attitude when you receive the word of God. But it calls you to deal treacherously with your wife. That's what it did. God said, Tabby, 
Mm. You'll weary the Lord with your words. Mm. We just talked about it. Mm. Yet you say, where did we weary him? When you say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighted in them homosexuals and them doggone fags. Wow. Oh, everybody is good. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody is good in America. Those are some good children. I'm tired of that. You have wearied the Lord. All right. You, mean you have wearied him when you say everyone that do a thing is good. The Bible told you there's none good, no not one. You keep telling them, telling these evil children and these evil women and these evil men, these Homosexual in these letters that they good people. You dumbbell, you. Church? Church? Do y'all got the, do y'all got a, do y'all got a, it's going to fit by? Yes. Do y'all see number three? Yes. What do we say? The sin of insincere religious profession. I wish I had a witness. What do we say, church? The sin of insincere religious profession. Carolyn, what is the sin of what is the sin of insincere religious profession? Katie, what is the sin of insincere religious profession? When they say everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, he delighteth in them. Or where where is uh, the God of judgment? Thank you very much. Now you know what the sin of insincere profession is. You find somebody that tells you that people is good and they there is good. That is a sin. You guys don't need to understand if I tell you to learn the Bible. That's a sin. You believe you're good, that's a sin. You will sin. You tell a person that they're good, you will sin. Free sin. The sin of you profess, if you call yourself a Christian, you believe people are good. And you tell them you are, they are good. You are sick. You will die and go to hell. Because that is the sin of insincere religious profession is when you say everyone that doeth evil is good. In the sight of the Lord. And God delight in them. God loved the homosexual yeah. just like he loved the lesbian. He loved everybody. That's a lie. Amen. That's a lie. It's a lie. Preach. <laughs> because homosexuality and lesbianism is, is sin, right? Amen. Yeah. What did we read in Proverbs 8.36? What did it say? What did Proverbs 8.36 say? What the Proverbs 8 36 say? But he that said against me wrongeth his own soul. Thank you! All they that hate me love, love death. And you telling them they good. Yeah. And you telling them they good. Yeah. You jack leg preacher. You telling them they good. Mm -hmm. And God loves them like he loved everybody else. You are lying. What do Proverbs 8 36 say? But he that said against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Who is the ones that hate God? Who is the ones that hate God? The ones that be quiet. Oh, go ahead, J.D. The ones that say everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and that he delighteth in them, or where is the God of judgment? And who else, Eric? Them that say, where is the God No. Who is, who is those that hate him? Go well, back to 836, church. Thank you very much, Bumblebee. Amen. Who is the ones that hate, hate, hate him, Bumblebee? He that against him. Thank How do we sin against him? How? When we say everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I try to teach y'all how to read your Bible. Many of you don't know how to read. You don't know how to put the things together. I was accused of cherry picking the scripture. Mm -hmm. How's that cherry pick? I was accused of cherry picking the script. You cherry pick the scripture. You knucklehead, you, you stupid. We compare spiritual with what? Spiritual. 
Amen. Dumb bill, you! <laughs> well, you need to sit down and be taught something. Now <laughs> well, you read John, you read Proverbs 8, 36. I've always been accused of since I've been preaching. They say you go from scripture to scripture. You cherry pick the scripture. This has been said by those who thought they knew something. The person just said this to me. You read Proverbs. You read Proverbs. This is so simple. You read Proverbs 8, 36. Then you come over here and you read Malachi 2.17, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Malachi, Malachi 2.17. That'll answer your question. Then I ask you a question. What is insincere profession? What is that? When you say everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighted in them. He does not delight in evil doing. He does not delight in those that do evil, right? What did he say in Proverbs 8, 836? Huh? Stop, 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 stop. Send it. This is what y'all gonna be saying. Send it. Send it. This is I tell y'all to watch for. Stop. Send it against me. Right? Right. And we read Malachi 217. I'll tell you how you sin against God. How do you sin against God? Somebody tell me how you sin against God. And everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord. You just said it against God. You just said it. Didn't you? Yes. You just said it. When you say everyone that doeth evil is good. When you call a lesbian good, a woman that's sleeping with a woman, good. You call a man that's sleeping with a man, good. You call a child that's running around here hot off the blood on Facebook all night long. You say ain't nothing wrong with that. What did you just do? You just sinned against me. You call that person good. You call that person good. You say our children is good. If you say American children is good and the rest of the children is evil and that's a good person to die, you're a stupid fool, ain't you? Yes. I don't care if a, hey, let me explain something to y'all. I don't care if a Muslim, never, I don't care if a Muslim, don't believe in predestination, sovereignty of God, obey all the moral laws in the United States of America. Like the three, the three that got kidnapped and they killed them all, they still weren't good people, was it? No, they was not good. Because the Bible says not good. You call them good on CNN or Fox News, you evil America. <laughs> Dummy. Muslims hate God. Because they was good, they paid their taxes. Knucklehead. <laughs> they paid their taxes. They was good. They bought a house in America. Came over here and adopted the Constitution of the United States of America. They would be good because they come to America. What's an insincere religious profession? Y'all have forgot this. <laughs> You have word, you have worried with the Lord with your words. Yet you say, when man have we worried him? When you say everyone that doeth good in the sight of the Lord, and he that got, got delighted in them, or well, where's the God of judge? They was partial unto you. That's what it said over here in verse number. Verse number nine. Therefore have all, therefore have I also made you contempt of my base and fall and people according as you have not kept my way, but you have been what? Partial in your law. How was they partial in your law? It's the same scripture. When you say when you say that's when you what? When you say when it comes out of you and it ain't scripture. Do you understand that's human reason? That's human reason. When you say, I don't see you like that. I don't see you like that. I don't see them lesbians being evil like he say they is. You is God limit. You're evil. You're mm -hmm. wicked, darn limit. And you're evil and you're going to hell. And that other faggot on CNN too, what's his name? Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper. Like two men trying to raise a child. No, go ahead. You're going to hell, Anderson Cooper, and you too, darn limit. 
And I'm not going to call you good. You evil in the sight of the Lord. You, you freak you. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? Did, I, did we do all the scriptures I had? We just got the 29, 24 proverbs. All right, that was the only one I had. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for what you're doing.